It seems that every influencer nowadays on planet YouTube is talking about cold plunges and how they are magically able to reduce your inflammation, improve recovery and give you more mental clarity. Well, they might have a lot of beneficial effects, but the claimed improvement of recovery, specifically after hard exercise, recovery after hard exercise kind of triggers me because it does not necessarily fit with first principle thinking and basic physiology. In this video, I will talk about cold plunging and specifically I will be reviewing two papers where they manipulated muscle temperature and then thereafter looked at blood flow as well as glycogen resynthesis, two crucial parameters of recovery and of long-term training adaptations. Two super interesting papers, so without further ado, let's go straight into it. Hi everyone, I'm Gomar. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich, based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied and taught different aspects of exercise physiology, and now I want to bring some of that science back to you guys. So let's first start with a bit of first principle thinking. Let's say you did a super hard exercise session, for example, whatever, a hit session, or a crossfit session, high rock session, and you're really fatigued. What is or which parameters are going to determine your recovery or how fast you can come back the next day? It's going to be, as we all know, sleep, nutrition, but also your genes, how well you are able to adapt to that training volume, uh, your training background, the other things you have uh, going around in your life and so on. And all those things kind of put together will determine how fast you come back the next day and how well you feel also recovered. But for the sake of this video, let's talk about nutrition. One of the things you really want to do right after exercise is you want to reincorporate as much glucose or glycogen in your muscle. This is called glycogen resynthesis because that will be your main fuel source the next day when you come back and do another high rock session and secondly you want to repair the potential muscle damage and potentially or for many people also want to build some muscle so you also want to let's say incorporate novel amino acids into the amino acid chains and build new proteins in your muscles that's why you eat high quality proteins as well as carbohydrates right after or at least in the period around your training so what this study looked at is the effect of cold water immersion, so cooling of one leg in this case, on how well the blood flow is towards the muscle and how this affects as well your incorporation of new amino acids inside the muscle. Let's go through it. So this is a study from Maastricht, the group from uh, Luc van Loon and uh, Tim Snyders, really good group that did a lot of work on muscle protein synthesis according to all different external uh, stressors. And what did they do? A very elegant and simple study setup. They had participants, I think 12 participants, male participants doing resistance exercise, like heavy resistance exercise. And then after that hour bout of resistance exercise, they put one leg in cold water for 20 minutes at 8 degrees Celsius. So pretty, pretty substantial cold water immersion. And the other ones uh, didn't do that. And then afterwards, they looked at several, several parameters of um, blood flow inside the muscle, as well as this incorporation of new amino acids or protein synthesis. Obviously, I mean, kind of as expected, their protocol worked. The, the skin temperature of the immersed leg that was in the cold water obviously dropped uh, quite substantially up until uh, 10 degrees compared to the other leg that just stayed at 30 degrees. That's exactly what you would expect, right? But then it gets interesting. They also looked, as I said, at microvascular blood flow. And microvascular blood flow is a combination or a ratio of the velocity of blood as well as the volume of blood. And specifically, the volume of blood and therefore also the, the, the whole blood flow was reduced immediately after this cold water immersion, as you kind of would expect because there is vascular or vasoconstriction after a cold stimulus. That's that's what you, what you also saw. But also at the microvascular level inside the muscle, this has been now for the first time demonstrated by this study. That's quite interesting because the one thing that delivers the nutrients, amino acids, as well as the glucose molecules to incorporate into your muscle is going to be obviously the blood, right? And when that is decreased right after cold water immersion, this might 
yeah, let's say, reduce your ability to take up those nutrients. And exactly, that is what they saw. Here you see the incorporation of phenylalanine, which is an amino acid inside the muscle over a given amount of time in this recovery uh, period. And you see here in the cold, the blue box, where it is for every participant reduced. And this is quite strong evidence, right? Because every participant was their own control. One leg was in the cold and the other leg was uh, not in the cold in normal temperature. So it makes sense right after exercise, when you do cold water immersion, you decrease the muscle temperature and this will reduce blood flow, microvascular blood flow, and reduces the synthesis of new proteins. Exactly what you need for long-term recovery. Because this is all based on studies that have been done before. From 2015 already they knew that when participants that were on a long-term resistance training, strength training program, when they always did cold water immersion after their training, right after their training, for a short time, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they had reduced performance gains as well as muscle gains. And that's not so straightforward to, to find, right? Because in science, finding effects on performance is not that straightforward. You always can find something in the muscle biopsies or maybe whatever with the physiology, but actual finding differences on performance or muscle mass gains is not that straightforward. And in this study, and also backed up by later studies and by reviews, uh, by overview studies, it is shown that for long-term adaptations, it's definitely not a good idea to do your cold water immersions or your cold plunges right after your training. Again, this is probably related to reduced blood flow and nutrient delivery. Because we're talking now about amino acids, right? Like having new proteins built into your muscle for optimal adaptations. But what about maybe something more interesting for more endurance sports like high rocks or even, even CrossFit, where you always, I mean, one, one of the key determinants of of recovery is going to be the ability to resynthesize your glycogen. When you do high intensity exercise, glycogen drops like a, like a stone in the water, and that's normal because you utilize all that glycogen during exercise. But then when you when you when you stop, when you recover, you eat, and that should go up in 20 to 24 hours, you should be back to baseline. It's a very important part of recovery, in my opinion, and sometimes overlooked uh, in many studies. So I was looking in literature, are there actually studies that looked at the resynthesis of glycogen after or during uh, cold water immersion. And this study uh, in the Journal of Physiology, published in, I think, 2017, so, so quite some time ago already, that looked at specifically that. And it's a very, very good study that utilized human, a human setup, but also an ex vivo mouse studies and so on to, to demonstrate exactly what I'm going to uh, show you here now. So what did they do? They did arm exercise, right? Like an arm cycle uh, ergometer. Why did they do that? Because they wanted to, after the exercise, immerse the, the arms only with different temperatures of a cuff. Let me explain. They first had three times five minutes of all-out exercise on the arms, so really hard exercise, and then they had four times 15 minutes of longer exercise at 50% of VO2 max. So that was for them submaximal, but the goal was really to exhaust the muscle using an endurance exercise protocol. No strength training uh, done here. And then afterwards, they had two hours of recovery where they ate carbohydrates, 1.1 1 uh, 1, 1 gram per kilogram body weight per hour. So this would be for me around 90 grams per hour of carbohydrates, so a substantial amount of carbohydrates. And then they had uh, placed their arms in a cuff that was heated, that was cooled, or that was just normal temperature, right? So three nice intervention arms. And then afterwards, after um, the recovery, they had a little warm up, and then they did, uh, again, these high intensity uh, interval sessions, uh, let's say, where they had to produce as much power as possible uh, for a five minute time window. Very interesting study where they had a long term, let's say, a cooling of the muscle. And what happened, kind of what you uh, would expect, on the left side, you see the blue, which is obviously the cold, uh, arm or the cold intervention arm, where the temperature uh, of the muscle actually drops substantially after uh, two hours, right? Up to up until 15 uh, degrees Celsius, that is intramuscular temperature, so very cold. While the heated goes up and the normal, the black bars, they just stay level. That's exactly what you would expect. But interestingly enough, also the power, the power they could actually produce after the recovery was reduced in the cooled arm. So again, this shows that 
muscle contractility and just fatigue resistance is actually reduced when the muscle is in a cold uh, state or a cold temperature. That is also one of the main reasons, by the way, that you have to warm up really well to get all the enzymes going and the whole, let's say, engine running before you go uh, into a hard exercise session, for example, a CrossFit session or uh, something like an open workout or high rocks workout. That also is demonstrated here. Kind of as expected, but what is more interesting from this study is also the rate of glycogen resynthesis was delayed in the cold, let's say, exposure or the cold immersed arm. So you see here on the blue, after the 30 minutes in the recovery period, they also checked how much uh, glycogen there is still in the muscle. And indeed, this was lower in the cold intervention arm. So glycogen resynthesis was actually lower. This let's say, aligns well to the data I just showed of the other study where blood flow is reduced, there's less delivery likely of amino acids as well as uh, glucose molecules, and that's why there's less glycogen resynthesis. Also, the reduced temperature might diminish the ability uh, or the function of certain enzymes that are related to uh, glycogen resynthesis. Very beautiful data showing that reduced blood flow might actually uh, hamper your ability to rebuild glycogen and new glucose stores, right? So the question now is, okay, but cold water immersion, is it then completely useless, my ice bath after a hard exercise? Well, then I have to say it depends. And there is some nuance to this because there have some, been some, some nice studies showing that after heavy resistance exercise, certainly in people who are not used to heavy resistance exercise, when you then do cold water immersion in all kinds of uh, types in various forms, that it would reduce the soreness. And that's important because it could be that you are that sore from a certain exercise stimulus that you don't have the ability to come back the next day because you're too sore. And it has been shown in quite a lot of studies now that this cold water immersion or cooling of the muscle does have some, let's say, numbing effect on the nerves, that there is a slowing down of the transmission of nerve signals. And this reduces how people feel, let's say, soreness or muscle pain. How they feel, that's important. It's kind of a subjective measurement, but it doesn't mean it's useless. Because, for example, if you are an athlete or someone who does a lot of competitions in one day, high-intensity competitions, and you want to reduce, let's say, the inflammation, but certainly also um, the, the soreness of the muscle, then it is actually a pretty good idea, I think, to do some ice baths right after your exercise training because of the fact that you will feel less muscle pain. And in some studies, not all, but some studies show that this also then improves parameters of recovery like a counter movement jump or the ability to still do back squats at a higher percentage of your reps. Again, this is very, very acute uh, recovery, two hours, three hours after your exercise session. This is not exactly the same as long-term recovery or long-term training adaptations. Very important nuance here that I think you have to make. By the way, talking about muscle soreness, one of the, the main determinants of muscle soreness and how sore you are after workout is training load. So if you're interested in training in a more structured way, where muscle soreness per se is not the goal of the training, but actually structured improvement throughout time, have a look at our functional fitness training plans, specifically for, for CrossFit, as well as for Hyrox by uh, scanning the QR code that is popping up right now. We offer evidence-based training programs that are up to date with the latest training science. We're always trying to find new papers, new information to incorporate that into our training programs. If you want to get really fit, but also want to support the page along the way, scan the QR code or click the first link in the description. Also, when you think about it, for example, the CrossFit Games or any competition where it's really warm and they have repetitive competitions or sessions in one day, it could be a good idea to do some ice bathing in between uh, workouts because of the uh, increased core temperature. If you can quickly decrease your core temperature to normal levels or even below and, and, and feel the recovery, feel the, the good sensations of a cold plunge, this could also enhance your perceived recovery and that's super important for athletes. So quick take home, uh, cold plunges right after hard exercise with a lot of eccentric contractions or a lot of high intensity work might reduce blood flow, two independent studies have shown that, and this could reduce nutrient delivery, anabolic signaling, as well as strength and muscle mass adaptations over time. Exactly what you don't want. So on another note, not really related to the take home here, but there have been 
some studies showing that sauna or hot water immersions, like hot bath, could actually increase blood flow and maybe enhance recovery in that way. I think it's a way better idea to do some kind of heat adaptation compared to always cold plunges right after exercise. But that's on another note. Lane Norton made a very good video and also a review of a specific study where they combined hot versus cold water immersion to the effects of recovery. I highly suggest uh, watching that one. I will let it pop up right now so you can click on it and, and watch that video. I think it was quite uh, insightful. Then on the other hand, Cold plunges are not fully useless at all, right? It could be, in competition, actually a very good tool to reduce core body temperature, which is very important, and also acutely reduce inflammation and muscle soreness or feeling of muscle pain. And that's, that could, in some athletes, also improve their performance, subsequent performance within the same day. But for long-term adaptations, I would watch out and I would not do too many cold plunges. Rather do them on rest days, or many hours after your session. All right, that was it for my part today. I hope I could bring a little bit of nuance to this whole discussion on a cold plunging and recovery. If you got value out of this video, don't hesitate to leave us a like as well as a subscription to the channel. It's really, really appreciated. If you want to learn more on how your timing of carbohydrates after a workout actually is very important for overall performance and recovery, just click the video that is popping up right now. See you in the next one. Ciao.